What's up guys, welcome to the Bluebot Tech Channel. Today we're gonna to be DIYing a really cool and easy LED lamp that just uses a few inexpensive parts. As always guys, these videos take a lot of time and effort to put out for you guys, so please leave a like or subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thank you. All right, so for this build, we're going to need an individually addressable LED strip, a power supply, white and clear PLA filament for 3D printing the lamp, one node MCU, jumper wires, two small three by 12 millimeter screws, and a PCB push button. All right guys, the first thing we're going to do is prepare your LED strips to be connected to the node MCU and power supply. As I mentioned earlier for this lamp, I'm using an SK6812 RGBW 5 volt LED strip. And the reason I chose this LED strip with an extra white channel was because I plan on using this lamp as a wake up light with a sunset routine. By having a dedicated white channel, I'll eliminate the harsh bluish look of a standard RGB strip, which should hopefully provide a nice sunrise effect to help me start my morning off right. As you can see here, I'm using a crimping toolkit to make the jumper cables to connect to my Node MCU instead of soldering it directly to the board. I'll first start by stripping the wires from the LED strip to prepare them for the female jumper ends to connect onto the Node MCU. Next is to solder the jumper cables to the female 5 volt DC power jack. Alright guys, since we're using WLED for this project, D4 will be our default data pin, which you see in the green on this wiring diagram. Also, since we're using a push button switch, we'll be using D3 and the ground pins. Here we're adding some extra functionality by including a push button on this lamp. The button will allow us to push the button once to turn the lamp on and off, as well as two other preset functions by double pressing the button and holding the button down. We'll look at setting up those presets in WLED later in the video. Alright guys, now that we have the wiring all set up, we're going to set up our 3D prints with an added bonus on how to customize a lamp yourself by adding whatever name you want to the lamp. The first thing that you want to do is go to Tinkercad.com, create an account or login and select create new design. Next, scroll down until you see the text object, drag and drop it onto the work plane. Click on the text and under the shape properties box, you can enter any custom name or text. Once that's done, we'll want to stand up the text by rotating it 90 degrees. Next, we're going to create a simple base for the text to make it easier to 3D print and fit it into the letterbox. Drag and drop a square basic shape onto the workspace and adjust it to fit the size under the text as a base. Next, to make sure that our custom text will fit our lamp, we'll want to go and select import and then import the Elena letterbox STL file into our workspace. Once the file's in our workspace, we'll want to adjust the custom text so that it fits perfectly within the letterbox. To do this, we'll select the text and the base and click the group button at the top. We'll then drag it into the letterbox and resize it so that it fits perfectly. All right, so once that's done, we're gonna go and export. We're gonna export it as an STL file. And there you go, you have the STL file to load into whatever slicer program you have. I use Cura personally, and I think it's pretty good. 
Now that we got the custom text all set up, let's print everything out and then put it all together. Unfortunately, at this point, I realized that I made the holes for the power cord and the push button a little bit too small. So now I'm going to have to do some quick surgery with the Dremel tool.
before finishing putting our build together, we'll want to flash WLED to our Node MCU. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is open up a web browser. You're going to want to type in WLED.me. And it's going to take you to the GitHub repository. Next thing you'll do is go to the releases. And then you're going to want to scroll down and you're going to try and find the newest version for your chipset. And for us, we'll be using an ESP8266. So I'm going to download that. And for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using ESP Easy Flasher. So I'm just going to open that up. It shows the COM port. If you have the Node MCU connected, it should show which COM port is open. Um, in my case, I do not have a Node MCU connected. Um, the next step would be to choose your, um, your bin file that you downloaded. And you're going to want to make sure that you place the bin that you downloaded into the ESP Easy folder, bin folder, and then it will show up. Um, in the firmware drop down, you'll select it, you'll hit flash and it will load up just like that. And then your node MCU is uh, perfectly configured. All right, guys, now that we got WLED out of the way, let's put this thing together. All right, so now the lamp is all put together. Now we need to connect it to the WLED access point and get it all set up. All right, the first step is to download an open WLED app on your phone. While you're doing this, plug in your lamp and let the Node MCU boot up. By default, the Node MCU will boot into access point mode, allowing you to connect to it. Once you're in the app, click on the plus sign and add a new device, then hit discover new lights. Connect to the WLED access point, which should be labeled as WLED AP. Once connected, go back to your app and wait for it to discover your device. If it doesn't discover your device after a few minutes, try power cycling the lamp and closing and opening the app. If this still doesn't work, then you need to enter your device's IP manually, which can be found in your router's network connections. Once you're connected, go to the Configurations tab in the top right corner and click on Wi-Fi Setup. Here you'll enter your Wi-Fi login information. Click save, and then the lamp will automatically connect to it at startup. After doing this, go back to the configuration settings and click on LED preferences. In these settings, we can adjust the number of LEDs in a strip, change the max voltage for the strip, and adjust the color order. Next, we'll go to time and macros configuration page. Here we can set the time, schedule preset routines, and adjust what happens when your lamp's button is pressed, double pressed, and held down for a couple seconds. On the WLED's colors page, we can adjust the lamp's colors, its brightness. Some built-in effects make use of one to three colors, so you can add them on this color palette. And this can add a little customization to the effects. On the effects page, there are a ton that we can choose from. Um, and we can adjust their brightness, their intensity, and speed on this page as well. The glitter and sunrise are my two favorite effects that I have programmed as presets in my lamp. You also have a timer tab, which automatically turns the light off after 60 minutes by default. And you can adjust the timer's time in the settings if you didn't like the 60 minute default setting. Now Peak just allows you to preview the effect that is currently running without having to actually look at your lamp. And this can be useful at times. All right, let's set up a quick sunrise preset by going to effects and clicking on the sunrise effect. Then go to your favorites tab, click create preset. Once we've done that, we can check mark the use current state, which essentially means that we are creating a preset for the current effect that is playing. 
And then the save to ID is the preset ID that you can call upon in the time and macro setting page. Click save and go back to the time and macro setting and scroll to the bottom. By default, preset zero turns the LEDs on and off. And we can set a button action to our new sunrise preset by entering the number one after a long press. Then we can create up a wake up routine. And for this routine, we're gonna set up our sunrise to start at 6.30 a.m. Monday through Friday and 8.30 a.m. Saturday through Sunday. And don't forget to add the preset number and click save. All right, guys, I hope you liked the video and found it useful. Please remember to like or subscribe for more content. Feel free to leave a comment in the section below if you have any questions or visit our Facebook page. All right, thank you.